You know it's Friday and we have a special for you in our entertainment segment, Salif Keita. He is known as Afropop singer, songwriter from Mali and as the golden voice of Africa. But also because of he has albinism, Keita visited the Voice of America studios earlier this week and sat down with Music Time in Africa host Heather Maxwell to talk about his music and some of his struggles as a person with albinism. Let's take a listen. Hello everybody, I'm Heather Maxwell. Salif Keita is an icon of African and of world music. He hails from Mali. And he's also a symbol of hope for people with albinism. At age 70, the golden voice of Africa, as he is known worldwide, has released 20 albums. He has won four Grammy Awards for Best World Music Albums, and he's in the studio right next to me. I am so honored to present to you Salif Keita. Bonjour, Salif. Bonjour. How are you? I'm okay. <laughs> Ça va très bien. I'm so happy to have you in the studio. Oh, merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Merci. Um, your most recent and, uh, you say, last album, Un Autre Blanc, mm -hmm. is beautiful. And I love the song, Tonton. Can you explain to us what the song is about? The way things normally go, married women refer to their husbands as Tonton, uncle. It's a term of endearment, so I talked a little about that. What happens between husband and wife? Mais c'est très joli. Merci. I love it. Merci. <laughs> also, uh, you know, like I said earlier, I remember you and mm. your music from mm. way back in 1989. In 1990, I was a Peace Corps volunteer in Mali. Mm -hmm. J'étais court la paix. Mm -hmm. One of the songs I really loved back then mm -hmm. was one called Koyan. Koyan, ah oui. Koyan. Let's listen to a little bit of that and tell me what is Koyan about? Mm -hmm. Koyan. Yeah. Uh, il se passe quelque chose. Koyan is about, well, something is happening. That's very contradictory. I say the more people there are in the mosque, the less Muslims there are in the mosque. I say that it's not because people go to the mosque that they are Muslims. No, on the contrary, they come to be seen, but they are not all true Muslims. I would like it if you could explain briefly the obstacles that you had to overcome when in the 1970s when you were a young kid to do music. Many obstacles, yes. Many obstacles because people don't understand how you can be white with a black dad and mom. They don't understand that it's a problem of depigmentation, that it's a problem of melanin that makes someone this way. They don't know. They don't have an explanation for that. And since they don't have an explanation for that, there are all kinds of translations, all kinds of traditions that really prevent albinos from having a good life. They are tortured, discriminated against. I did a song, The Difference, for albinos. One last question. I would like it, Salif, if you could sum up mm -hmm. what you think the music can do good in the world for the young people who are now wanting to become musicians. You have to talk about what's happening. An artist has to affirm him or herself according to the problems in Africa. Africa needs to be known. Africa needs to affirm herself. Africa needs to talk. Africa needs people who will talk about her so that she gets out of anonymity, that she gets out of silence, and to make known what kinds of problems Africa goes through. We need artists to do that. And I think a lot of people agree with me that Africa counts on these artists to be known and affirm herself. Merci, Salif. 
Merci beaucoup. Thank you. What a great program, Heather. Thank you so much. Salif Keda, not just a golden voice for Africa, but also a mentor in Mali and also for the rest of the continent. Heather, thank you so much for that package.